say young. I'm talking about Benaiah's age. You know, uh, the only thing I knew about giving is I got something on birthdays and Christmas. And that's when you got stuff. And very seldom do you have anything to give away. You didn't think about giving anything away or, or releasing something to other people. When I walked through, I, I, I named this message, What Give and Do. Give and do so much in your life, man. It, uh, it, it changes your attitude. All of you have seen how the Grinch stole Christmas. All of you know how his heart got bigger once he started learning to give and how he went into Whoville and gave. And I find it kind of funny that Dr. Seuss started picking up on that. And though some people may not believe the gospel, they will believe Dr. Seuss. And uh, yeah, they'll even believe there's such things as green eggs and ham. And uh, I tell you what, if the, if the eggs are green and ham's green, I ain't eating it. Yeah, I don't care what Dr. Seuss says. John chapter 12, you know, wherever the presence of God is, I believe the spirit of generosity is there that people become generous. And, you know, again, I'm, I'm moving through my home today, and I'm realizing how, many, how much stuff God's blessed me with. I, I will walk people to visit our home through the house, and I, I actually say to them, you see something you want. Uh, you see something there, you can have it. You know, uh, and almost all of them go to my knives. And, and then I back away, and I'll do this thing, I, and, and I haven't hit my knives yet. I'll just say, uh, take whichever one you want. And I'm thinking, don't take that one, <laughs> you know. But they will. They, they may take that one. And that's happened two or three times already this year. And you know what? I still got abundance of knives. I, I just like knives, you know. I like knives. I like guns. And that's what, what you is. When most of the time, I know some dudettes like it, but those dudes like it. John 12, verse 1. Six days before Passover, as you know, this is uh, a week before Jesus was crucified. He entered Bethany where Lazarus so recently had been raised from the dead was living. And again, he's, he's been resurrected, and the first place you go after you get resurrected, you hang out with Jesus. Can I get an amen? Amen. Lazarus and his sisters invited Jesus to dinner at their home. Martha was serving. You know that. Lazarus was one of those sitting at the table with them. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. Some places was the word alabaster was used. She poured it on Jesus' feet, and she wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. When I read this, I think of several things. First, that she was not actually allowed to mingle with the men, and yet she broke custom, and she came in, and she took this. And, and the word pint there actually carries with it a thought of a pound, 16 ounces. You know, I have uh, colognes, and almost all of them are like an ounce and a half, two ounces. But, I mean, if you get a 16-ounce bottle of Geo, or, or Gucci Dark or whatever it is out there, amen, or, or, or Victoria, whatever you, you spray on yourself, a pound of it, that's a big old bottle, amen? As a matter of fact, it was worth about a year's wages what she had. And Judas Iscariot, of course, one of the disciples, even then getting ready to betray him. So he's already set in motion the 30 pieces of silver betraying Christ in Gethsemane. He said, why wasn't this oil? this ointment, this perfume sold, and the money given to the poor, it would have easily brought 300 uh, pieces of silver. He said this not because he cared two cents about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of their common funds, but also embezzled them. Very, you know, when you read the Word of God and you see the word thief, now, I don't do well with thieves. I don't do, do well with people who take something along somebody else. And God even tells us when we're not givers, we're, we're stealing from the kingdom. Amen. And we're hurting ourselves. He uses that word in the book of Malachi, a thief. Jesus said, let her alone. She's anticipating and honoring the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you. You don't always have me. When I look at the characters of the story and also the revelation understanding she had, they didn't have, she knew within a week or so he was going to die. Something was going to happen to Jesus. So she was preparing. A lot of people would use this perfume and ointment for the burial. They would, they would layer it underneath all of the, the layers of linen that they would put on someone. Amen. And when they did that, it would keep them smelling better over the days because a lot of them were in an open-type tomb. So she knew that was preparing for him. Amen. And so she anticipated it. So we see here we have, uh, uh, we have Mary. We got Martha. Um, of course, Mary being the grateful woman, I often said the, the, we have the grateful dead. 
that would be Lazarus, a man who's grateful that he's not dead no more. Uh, Mary was that consummate worshiper. She anointed him there. She had vases, and she broke the box there. You know, worship is giving what you value, and that's what worship did this, tonight. When you worship, you give us something of value. You gave your time to be here tonight. You, you lifted your hands. You worshiped. You opened your mouth. You told God how wonderful he is. That's what worship is, that he is worth it. Then, then she went to his feet in fellowship. Now, I'm going to walk through this very fast. Three times you find this Mary in the Bible. First, there was sunshine when things were good. Yeah, I've learned that if you fellowship with him when things are good, it's a whole lot easier to fellowship when things are bad. Amen. We, we find, and you know the story, they come to the house. They sit there at his house. And uh, Mary and Martha, she invites them in. Martha does the cooking. You know that. She gets mad at, at uh, Jesus because Mary's at his feet. Jesus looks at her. She said, Master, don't you care that nobody's here to take care of uh, uh, help me out cooking? I'm in here cooking for 13 people, 14 people, 15 people. Ain't nobody helping me in this house. Mary's at the feet. I don't know what I'm going to do. She's upset, man. She's mad. And Jesus looked at her, and what did he say? Martha. Martha, thou art comforted and, uh, and troubled about much serving, but one thing is needful, and Mary chose the good part. So it's important to worship before you go out to work. When you start your day off, get the worship going first. Tell God how wonderful he is. And then we find her in sorrow, with fellowship there in the bad. When Lazarus died, she ran and got at his feet, and she said, Lord, don't you care? Well, of course he cares. He showed up after La oh, I know he was three days late, according to some. But he showed up there, and it was during sorrow. And we find ourselves often at the feet of Jesus during sorrow. And then sympathy, amen. The Scripture says here, this is the time she knew he was going to die, and she came in, and she broke the box, she poured it on him, and you would think she would have saved that for a whole week, saved it up to when he did die, and then put it on his body. But she gave him, listen to me, she gave him his flowers before he died. And many of us, we always wait till the end of somebody, we, and out of guilt, we'll buy flowers. Out of guilt, we'll do certain things. But what about while we're alive? Can't we give our flowers now? Can't we do something good for somebody now? When you do that, you're telling them, look, your life matters, not just your death, but your life matters. And by the way, there was Lazarus sitting there. Do you remember in the chapter, the chapter before this, Lazarus is dead in a grave. And when they went to take him out of the grave and Jesus called him forth, Martha said, he stinks, Lord. You know why he was smelling after three days? Because they didn't put all that fancy ointment on him, all that stuff. Guess who, had, who was hiding it back there in the house? It was Mary. Mary had it. We don't see that uh, that. that uh, uh, Lazarus is mad. Why didn't you cover me with that sweet smelling expensive stuff? Amen. She didn't do it because at that moment she was saving it for the kingdom, saving it for the king, saving it to do something extravagant. Amen. And to break that. Her extravagant devotion was because she was a giver. Amen. Mary didn't use that perfume on her brother. Amen. And, he, and again, by the way, he wasn't offended. He'd been raised from the dead. There are those who detest the fact that you give your finances to the kingdom of God via through the church and missions. They don't like it. They think you're crazy and you lost your mind. I figured over 40-something years of serving God, I have already given right out of half a million dollars to the kingdom of God. I figured this out today when I was sitting at my desk. Had no idea the accumulation of that much over those years. But I have no regrets. I wish I'd have gave a million. I wish I could have. But God blessed me because, I, I again, and I saw people testify how they never done this. They never were a giver. They never were a tither, never gave offerings. But because they did, God started blessing them. And they realized this, this thing, man, I just got to say, say that for the back row to hear, you know. I want everybody to catch that principle. Her devotion lingered. It was expensive perfume. Little goes a long way. Every time I round, round my little friend David Huff, he got this stuff he wears, some kind of Paraguay or something. What is it? Pachuga. Pachuli. I said, my God, David, you smell good when you get in this car. I said, what is that? He said, patchouli. I said, oh, that's good. And so he sent me some, just a little bitty vowel of it, like 70 bucks, about a quarter ounce of that stuff. I lost it in the flood. But, uh, but I had it for a little while. And I, all I had to do was put a drop here and a drop here. 
and I couldn't stand myself. <laughs> Some of that stuff too strong, amen? I mean, you can take a good old can full of uh, Old Spice of Brut and spray it in there and run through it, and I mean, you smell all right the rest of the day. It don't over overwhelm you. Amen. But that stuff right there was strong. This is what this stuff like. When she broke that box, it got all up in the room. The disciples smelt it. Everybody smelt it. Martha smelt it. Lazarus was smelling good. Everybody. And the thing is, is once you break your worship, once you give, amen, you don't get it back in the box. You can't put it back in the box. It's already out. Amen. And when you give, it's gone just like that. She was unafraid of others' opinions against the Jewish tradition. For a woman to let her hair down in public or sit at the table with men was unheard of. But she pulled that pin out, let that hair down. I see it's such an emotional moment. She gave him his flowers early while he was still alive. There was an appreciation for that. And because of that, she gave her legacy destiny. And I use those words a lot, legacy destiny, amen, that what you've done here will matter. It's important. Givers always leave a legacy, something to remind people that they were here, that they mattered, amen, oftentimes to the kingdom of God, amen, so others can find it. I don't want to always have to go to a graveyard to realize you left something that it was a tombstone that somebody put up for you. I want to know what did you do while you were here? Amen. You did something here that made things better for others. What others called waste. She said, uh, Judah said, she wasted it. She wasted it. She wasted it on you. Jesus said, that ain't waste, son. That's worship. Amen. She didn't waste that stuff at all. Jesus defended her devotion on her motives. Her motives were pure. She wasn't self-seeking. There was an urgency of the moment. In a week, he'll be, I believe, some of that perfume was so strong, and it was in his clothing. That when they whipped him, it emitted the aroma of her worship. When they abused him, it emitted the aroma. They didn't wash their clothes like y'all do. Amen. It's a robe. I got coats. I got coats I have never washed. Amen. Because I'm not dirty when I'm wearing them. They just a, a jacket I put on. He had a cloth like that, and she poured that over him. Amen. And so when they beat him, the fragrance would still be out there. Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples in verse 8, I'm sorry, verse 4, says one of his disciples, even then getting ready to betray him, said, why wasn't this oil sold and the money given to the poor? It meant he usually brought 300 pieces of silver. He said this not because he cared two cents about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was in charge of their common funds, but also embezzled them. Jesus said, let her alone. Leave her be. She's anticipating and honor the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you. You don't always have me. And it's true. We always have the poor. We always have people that are going to need. Amen. But there are times you do something extravagant for other people. There are times you do something extravagant for the kingdom of God. And that's what she was doing here. That word, it's actually in the Greek, it's spikenard. It, it, the word means trustworthy, genuine, pure, very costly, extremely valuable. Her worship filled that house. And then Jesus said to her, let her go, leave her alone. He stood up for the women. Leave her alone. Stay away from her. Amen. Just, just let her go there. Hallelujah. Jesus will always speak up for the generous. Now I want to flip over to Luke chapter 19. We'll walk fast here. All the people saw this. What did they see? They saw Jesus talking with a tax collector. There ain't nothing that brings, there's two things that bring anxieties into my life. One is going to an airport. Another one getting a, a letter that says IRS. Them two things right there just get my goat, man. I mean, I feel that little anxiety because I, I don't, I have yet to have a lot of good news when it says IRS on it. Amen. I know y'all never got those letters, but I, I've, I've received a few of them and seen them. Amen. So here he is, Luke 19. Verse 7, all the people saw this and began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up. Remember Zacchaeus went up a tree as Jesus passed him by and Jesus saw him, called him by name. We don't have a, a record, a record anywhere that he knew Zacchaeus, but he knew him by name. And he invited himself to the house. See, I have learned to be more like Jesus. I will invite myself to people's houses. I just do it. Amen. It, I was out with a guy last week. He's a bird watcher, new guy in the church, you know, and, and we were talking, and he was telling me about his place. I said, I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes coming to your house. Matter of fact, I'm going to follow you there so you ain't got time to hide anything when I get there. 
Amen. I just invited myself. Sometimes you just got to, and that's what Jesus did. He invited himself over to Zacchaeus' house. And, amen. He, and the Bible says, but Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Lord, here I am, and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. Let's do that first because I'm a wealthy man. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Let's take that word if and let you know for sure he had cheated some people to get his wealth. Amen. But he said, I'm going to pay him back four times. Amen. I'm going to bless him. And Jesus said today, salvation has come to the house because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. His salvation, his love for God, his passion for Jesus at that moment had been so ignited that money didn't matter. Amen. All he had wasn't mattering anymore. He said, I, I can, give me, leave me half of it. I know I can make it through life if I have half. But the rest of it, you know, I, I'll give it back up. I'll give it up. The bottom line is we don't leave here with anything. Amen. So learning how to manage your finances to get you closer to the end, but also knowing that you've got enough to be able to bless somebody else with it. Somebody's going to get your house. They're going to get your vehicles. They're going to get your guns, your stuff. That's why I always say if you have opportunity to be a blessing and give some of that now that you don't need, go ahead and do it now. Amen. Be a blessing. In this matter, he gave it away back to the other people. John 12, verse 4. Then said one of his disciples, we're going back to it, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, uh, which should betray him? Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pences, given to the poor? He was a thief. He, this man here, Judas, let me tell you, he represents the complainers, the takers, those that are always objecting, always expressing their opinion about how things should be done. You've seen them on social media. People who always complain will ultimately forsake. There will be, there will always be people with an opinion about your generosity and your giving. They'll always be a little bit bothered by it. A lot of times it's family because they want what you're giving away. Amen. So you, you got to be careful that. Judas was not only frustrated with her, he was frustrated with Jesus. Listen, never worry about the Judas spirit. It's going to take care of itself. It will self-destruct. Amen. It, the, it, it, well, I'll read that scripture to you in a minute. But this one right here, Judas, in Acts 1, what happened to him? Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus, for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. He was part of the ministry. See, I've heard people tell me that Judas wasn't saved. He wasn't going to heaven. He cast out devils. Jesus taught him his name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, I'm not here to jack with your, your theology too much, but I'm just telling you, don't live in such a way to be so uh, tight wicked, mean, and betray others and expect to get to heaven. Now, this man purchased the field with the reward of iniquity. In other words, the money he got that he threw back into the temple, they took that money and they bought a cemetery with it. And the Bible says that he fell headlong. He burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out. He hung himself. He committed suicide. Amen. In doing so, they left him there to bloat. And when he burst, they let him fall into the ground, and nobody else cared about it. Amen. There's nothing more threatening to the enemy than your ability to give. Mary's testimony, she gave. We all are responsible for our responses in our daily encounters with Jesus and each other. So though from John 12, remind yourself that like Lazarus, you've been resurrected. Amen. To serve like Martha, grateful to worship, and give as Mary. And there lurks an ungrateful Judas in all of us. There are times that he sticks his head up and you've got to deal with him. Generosity will always produce prosperity. We give our legacy destiny, Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you've met with, it shall be bet back to you. I call that the, the shovel principle. In other words, if I use a spoon to measure out my giving, spoon comes back. But if I use a shovel, amen, a big shovel to, to give out, it always comes back that way. He said it's up to you to how you want to do it. Acts 20, verse 35, I have showed you all things, now that by labor and Paul speaking, you ought to support the weak. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now let me start closing here. Proverbs eleven twenty four. 24. Figure this one out for me, please. One man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another man withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. You gave and you kept getting. You held on, 
and you lost. I gave, and I kept getting. I held on, and I lost. You see the difference here? Now, I run with some people that like casinos. Y'all ain't got to look around. I, I have never dropped a dollar of my own in a casino. Never dropped a quarter of my own in a casino. I never condemn people for going to casino. But I meet more people that will give money to a casino trying to get something because when they get something, you know what it does to them when they hear the ching, 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 ching? It brings joy to them. Amen. But they're giving. And those casinos, you got to hit it again. How did Vegas become Vegas? Losers built Vegas. Oh, but I never lose. You're lying. You gave so much money to get to that jackpot the first time. Amen. Not everybody, listen, almost everybody I met said, no, I never lose. Where are the losers? I mean, surely somebody has lost. Thank you, Cheryl. Because, okay, there's a few more hands. You ain't asking you to confess. Amen. I'm just saying. That, that, you know, there are people that lose. It has, but it's that chance because we love chance. But chance, again, what happens? Happiness is where chance comes from. But joy, joy is where my giving comes from. Amen, when I give. So one man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds, withhold, restrain, refrain, refuse to observe, and withhold back. Ecclesiastes eleven six. sow your seed in the morning, and in the evening let not your hands be idle, for you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both. So in other words, well, you, you sow, but you need to keep working, because you don't know if it was the sowing at the moment of whatever seed you sowed that's going to bring it back, or me working that's going to bring it back. I can promise you this, as a rule, working will always bring it back to you. Amen. So he said, whichever one you need to do, I want you to do. Now, giving can be a lot of things. It can be finances. It can be things that you have. It can be a handshake. It can be a hug. We give of ourselves to one another. Today, a young youth pastor was out at the church, and he told me, he said, Pastor, this is what I want to preach. And I said, son, let me give you a message that dated back to like eight or ten years ago. And I went in on my computer, and I hit a message about fishing and hunting. And he looked at that, and he said, man, that's what I need. I said, what is your email? And I sent him two sermons, two messages that will bless him from now on because I know how to write a message. Amen. And I wanted to give that to him, that he would have something. I, don't, I can't tell you how many preachers, and some of them you know are well-known, that I have sent sermons to to help them out to make them look good in front of their people. Amen. Stand with me. Robert, you give me a little music back there. Now, I want you to do something here. Now, if you did not bring something tonight, it's okay. It's okay. I announced this Sunday. But, but it, it's okay. You, you don't have to give anything tonight. But in just a few minutes, I'm going to release you He's worthy to, to walk around this room. And maybe you have something that you brought from home. I saw a Ramirez. He put his in a bag. So I was back in the room back the there, Holy and already some guys was, were giving each other stuff. Even I thought, man, y'all jumped the gun quick. But, but it's just cool. I don't care if it's your ball cap. See, I've done this before without ever announcing it to people. And, and, and I, I can never forget back in the day, H, in a packed out building, an old auction barn, watching people with such joy walk around and women giving their earrings away. Uh, yeah, guys giving pocket knives away. Amen. And it, and it, it brought, and I, wa and I just sat back and I watched this joy come all over the people. Because joy comes from giving. Amen. And releasing. Now, it's my hope that I receive nothing tonight from you because I already have. But allow me to give to some. Amen. And I want you to give to some. Sometimes we come with preconceived ideas. I'll give you something. You give me something. Give for a gift. Didn't we do that? I'll give you a gift. You give me a gift. Amen. And that's not necessary. Amen. I know for sometimes with siblings we do that, but it's not necessary. But if you have an opportunity to give somebody something tonight, I'd like you to take a moment. I'd like y'all come out of that booth. Get on out of that booth. And come on down here and join us. Amen. And uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what's going to happen this weekend. The swap gets together. We thank you for the gifts that people are going to bring. And on the 17th, we're going to bless the March of Dimes. I thank you for the announcements that run through this church and remind us. But right now, let us be able to give one another something. 
And then we leave this place, let joy permeate our lives. I thank you for your mercies and your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody gave me a backstrap on Sunday. We put it on the Traeger Grill.